all of us aware of this definition of health as not merely as absence of disease or illness, but a state of well-being at the physical, mental, social and spiritual levels. This is what I plot here. And this is what I call as the health line. This is our normal health. And when we lose our health, we come to the illness, ending with the death. On the other side, we have positive health, moving towards perfect health. So all of us should see that we move from this region, if at all. If you are here already, we should start moving up the ladder. And it's here that yoga can be very contributory towards this end. So absence of disease, positive well-being, physical, mental, social and spiritual levels. Essentially in modern medicine we have been working on the dealing with diseases much more than prevention or moving towards perfect health. The contribution of the modern medical system, I don't have to emphasize, is almost unparalleled. And in fact all systems of health should start using these tools of medicine. So the whole essence is to establish the cause-effect relationship and remove the cause. Hundred years ago we thought cause for most of the diseases which we are doing that were germs and we had antibiotics, vaccines, which worked wonders for us. But today, increase in the modern diseases, which are essentially lifestyle, stress-related diseases. Asthma, diabetes, hypertension, heart problem, epilepsy, migraine. And what is the root cause for all this? The search continues. And yoga could be a very effective answer to these problems. While yoga has started becoming very popular around the globe, 22 million people in the United States practicing yoga, 5 million in a small country like Germany, people have their own conceptions. I remember one of the persons who came from the US, he told, hey, I know everything about yoga, he said. He said, can you tell me what it is about? He talked about this rope trick. He said, a person came and then he was demonstrating on the TV. Person with a long body and a long rope. And he comes and throws the rope up. Rope goes swinging up. And it stands unsupported. Now look at the feet. He jumps and holds the rope. Goes up. Wonderful. Fantastic. This should be really yoga, he said. Well, many people associate yoga with some sort of magic. And, well... We can understand in a foreign land where yoga is too foreign, they can take anything in the name of yoga. But what about in our country where yoga grew um, thousands of years? Even here, most people have the notion that yoga is always associated with some siddhis, supernatural powers. And a great yoga master comes, a spiritual saint comes, go to him, you know, a lot of powers. Probably he can help us to get a child or maybe that he can tell us whether I remain in my power. Business people have their own saints and politicians always have their own mentors and saints. What do we see on our TV? All types of very complicated asanas. Bending the body to the front, to the back, to the side and the left and the right and inverted posters. All it essentially acrobatics of the body. When you look at that, you really marvel at that. What a fantastic capacity body can have. But then, with the heart of mine, is, oh, I should have started this yoga when I was very young. Now it is not for me. It throws us up. Or breathing acrobatics. Blasting the nostril from left to right and right to left, all types of breathing acrobatics. Then what is really yoga? The word yoga in Sanskrit comes from the root called yuj. Yujyate anena iti yogaha. Yuj is to join. That by which we join is called yoga. What is it we are going to join? Small little individual personality we are. We are going to join with a tall, pervasive, total cosmic personality. Raising ourselves from our animalistic, instinctive level to become normal human beings with normal discrimination power. Can you see? Am I on the way? Is it okay? become great human beings. 
and superhuman beings, divine human beings, and reach that perfection itself, pure consciousness. And that's called total freedom. So Vivekananda said that yoga is a conscious process. It's not a mechanical, brutal process. To accelerate the process of evolution in a single life or a few years or just even few days. It all depends on how effectively we do that. The great master Sri Aurobindo, he said, yoga is a technique for total personality development. He said. Physical, mental, emotional, with a spiritual basis, spiritual levels, he said. So, yoga is a systematic, conscious process, therefore for developing even health. So, Vivekananda said that essentially there are four main streams of yoga. In this beautiful proclamation, which is short and sweet, he gives the whole essence of the Indian culture, particularly the yoga dimension. He said, each soul is potentially divine. We all have immense power within us. The brain researchers know we hardly use 3% of the brain capacities. The remaining is all unused. We all have immense power within us. The goal of life is to manifest that divinity, that immense power we have. How to manifest that power? That is the goal of life. How do we do that? He says, by controlling nature, internal and external. External behavioral patterns should change. Internal habits, ignorance, emotional stavaries, mental restlessness, all that has to change, including even the body. How do we do that? Four main ways of doing that. He said, do it by work or worship, philosophy or psychic control. Path of work, convert every activity into a yoga. Hey, can you convert even standing as a yoga or sitting as a yoga, lying down as a yoga? Yes, says karma yoga. Whatever actions we are doing, can we convert every action into a yoga? That's the path of work or karma yoga. The path of worship is the path of what I call as emotion culture. How to use our emotions to handle ourselves. Path of philosophy. Already philosophy has started. I call that as the jnana yoga. The path of analysis. And the psychic control. Control over the mind. It's also called as raja yoga or patanjali yoga four main streams. But there are a large number of techniques of yoga and methods of yoga. Apart from these four, you have Dhyana Yoga, Jap Yoga, Lai Yoga, Kundalini Yoga and series of them, Swara Yoga. But all these things can be brought into these four main streams. Either we work with the intellect or work with emotions or work with the willpower or start doing it in the action itself. These are the four main streams. And one of the greatest contributions of Swami Vivekananda is to say that you can choose any one of them, depending on your choice, by one, or you can choose two of them, or three of them, more, or all of them, all four streams you can do. And particularly Sri Aurobindo was very emphatic, for modern man we need all the four, he said, that you have to use your will, you have to use your emotions and harness your emotional power, you have to use your brilliance and the intellect you have to develop. And finally, bring it to our day-to-day -day action. We call it as integral yoga. Ultimately, what is the goal? To be free. Free from what? Free from tensions and stresses. Freedom from all diseases. Can we disease free? Can we tablet free? Yes, yes, yoga. Freedom from mental restlessness, bondage of the mind, bondage of the emotions. Tossed up and down in our emotional upsurges. Can we be free from that? Yes, says yoga. Can we be free from ignorance at the intellectual level? And finally, free from the bondage of the body itself. No? Can we be free from all the bondages of the body itself? That is the freedom that is talked about here. The highest freedom. Not a small freedom. 
which normally we think in the freedom movements, in the women's club movement, for example. You know, what they want, what type of freedom our children and these people want. Nobody should ask us what we are doing. Nobody should ask when we come home. Nobody should ask what way we are spending our money. You know? This is freedom, fine, no harm. But that too small a freedom. You know? Are we free from this bondage, freedom from tension, stresses? Therefore, yoga aims at that highest freedom. And all paths lead to the same goal, is what is implicated here. Jnana Yoga is the path of intellect. What do we mean by intellect? Power of discrimination, power of analysis. We use the power of analysis as scientists and go to the very base of the intellect and thereby you reach your original state. Patanjali called it as Swarupa. And that is from where we all have come. Raj Yoga uses the willpower. Raj Yoga is the name given to the Patanjali Yoga. The Yoga talked about by Patanjali, 900 BC, according to Max Muller. And here, you gain mastery over the mind. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha, which of course we are going to elaborate in the coming hours. Bhakti Yoga is to harness the emotions. Many people have weird conception about bhakti. Unless you have faith in a particular god, you cannot go for bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is a science of emotion culture. How to harness our emotions, how to gain mastery over the emotions. Enslaved by our emotional slavery, kama, krodha, lobha, moha, madha, matsarya, anger, greed, jealousy, hatred, all that we are being tortured and is one of the major causes for all the problems today. Bhakti Yoga is the science to systematically harness this emotional power, gain mastery over the emotions and move from violent emotions to the softer emotions, gentler emotions, cultured emotions. And that is the dimension of what we call Bhakti. And Karma Yoga, how to bring that to our day-to-day -day action, path of action. And all these four paths lead to the same goal. The term used for this highest freedom is called moksha. Moksha is not that you go away, you die and then one day you reach somewhere else. No. Moksha is to gain freedom even now. Atra Brahma Samashtute, right here you can become free, is said. Freedom, as I mentioned, from all bondages. Tensions, stresses, diseases, mental restlessness, emotional upsurges, intellectual conflicts and from the very bondage of the body itself. Therefore, this is a schematic, what we see here. You have Jnana Yoga, the Raja Yoga, the Bhakti Yoga, the Karma Yoga. All leading to that total freedom. And that is the state of infinite bliss, everlasting bliss, of the highest happiness, infinite happiness we can say. And it is a state of total knowledge. People say all knowledge is structured in consciousness. Can you go back to the total knowledge base? And the power, the highest power, power even to create objects, power to create even a universe. That is the state called moksha. Where is that? Not far away, somewhere in the heavens, unseen place, right here everywhere and that is our original state from where we all have come. So all yoga ultimately lead us to the same goal, it is said. And that goal is ever existing. We have forgotten that, we have come out of that and we think that we are only the physical body, we have to go back. So that is the knowledge base is offered. So, in dealing with health problems, we use what we call as the integrate approach, using all these dimensions. We use Jnana Yoga, Raja Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Karma Yoga, because the modern challenges, modern ailments are not simplistic. An infectious disease, a contagious disease could be simplistic, one dimension. A physical trauma can be one dimension. But the modern ailments essentially are all stress generated, triggered and aggravated. 
and they are multidimensional. No doubt a physical trauma can cause stress, but more important than that is mental restlessness, emotional upsurges, deep-rooted psychological conflict, conflict between husband and wife, conflict between one director and another director, conflict between parents and children, could all tear us apart. So stress is a multidimensional, very complicated phenomenon. And therefore all the diseases that we talk about today, which have become common ailments, are all multidimensional. So you need a multidimensional answer. That's what the total approach of yoga presents us. What we do in dealing with these ailments is to work at different levels. At the physical body level, we use diet, control over the food, then we use some cleansing techniques, kriyas, we use simple yogic postures, asanas and also the movements of the body, sukshma vayayam. At the prana level, we use the pranayama, which has started becoming very popular around the globe. Pranayama is very, very powerful. Then at the mind level, we use meditation, focusing of the mind, defocusing of the mind, dharana, dhyana, leading to samadhi. And we deal with the emotions, emotion culture. And yoga essentially therefore is to gain mastery over the mind, you know, said Patanjali. In his accomplished work called Patanjali Yoga Sutra, he said, Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha ha, he said. Yoga is to gain mastery over the mind. And what is so special about this gaining mastery over the mind? We all have good power of concentration. And today millions and millions of people all over the world have tremendous power of concentration. Can we say that all these millions are yogis? No. Take for example a business executive, he goes to work and intensely he is working with the fullest of concentration, 12 hours, 14 hours, sometimes even 16 hours. And what happens to him when he returns home? The same thinking loop, worrying loop and it haunts him, he is unable to come out of that thinking loop and slowly start losing sleep, very progressive he starts drinking. Otherwise, he goes to the doctor and starts taking sleeping pills. But in a year, he has a massive heart attack. Lands up in Narayan Hrudhyalaya here. Why? He is very brilliant, very sharp, full of concentration power. Why should he suffer? That is where Patanjali makes a point. It is not enough if you have a very powerful capacity of concentration. There is a second dimension to the mastery. The capacity to come out of the thinking loop, go deep into the subject, you should be able to come out of that. And this capacity to withdraw and come back has been emphasized by another great yoga master called Vasishta. He says, Mana Prashamana Upayaha Yogaha. He said, Yoga is to calm down the mind, is to silence the mind. And therefore, it is a upaya, it is a skill. Yoga has therefore two components. One is to have a very powerful concentration, focusing of the mind, deep, going deep into the subject. Another is coming back and remaining calm, quiet and silent. And this is the dimension that Patanjali has presented to us. Therefore, mastery of the mind has two dimensions. For a long time I never understood that particular episode of Abhimanyu. A young lad getting into that chakra vyuha and getting stuck and getting cut and dead. What is that implication? Only when I understood this yoga, I could connect it. Very young, brave, youth, Abhimanyu. And Dronacharya has set that most complicated warfare formation called the chakra vyuha. And Abhimanyu was piercing through that. Dronacharya has kept the most important men, Atiratas and Maharathas, at crucial junctures. Come on, whoever comes, you should be able to catch them. Krupacharya, Karana, Duryodhana, Dushasana, everybody lined up to catch anybody who comes in. 
But look at the dexterity and the speed and the skill of Abhimanyu. He pierced through the Chakra Vyaha. Nobody could stop him. He went deep in. Alas, he did not know the trick how to come back. He got stuck. He got cut. He got dead. In a sense, we are all modern Abhimanyus. Why? We have become very brilliant, very sharp, very intelligent. We have unraveled the mysteries of nature around us. We have been able to go deep into the subject. What fantastic achievements we have done. But if somebody asks, okay, why don't you keep quiet? One minute, two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. Look at the modern youngsters. They are so brilliant, so intelligent. When you look at them, you really feel so proud of them. Give them any task, immediately they will go and finish. No? Particularly TV and radio and several other things. They do fantastic work. But ask them to sit quiet. No chewing gum in the mouth, no computer, no calculator, no video games. Sit quiet, biggest punishment. Why? We have grown gigantic on one front. And on the other side, we are very pygmies. That is where yoga comes into picture. Develop both the dimensions. Mana prashamana upayaha yogaha. Said great master Vasishta. Therefore, essentially, yoga is to raise ourselves from the lowest to the highest levels and reach the highest state. So this is the schematic which we are going to study later on when we talk about this Raja Yoga or the path of willpower or the Patanjali Yoga. So again, mastery over the mind by using two techniques. One is concentration, focusing. Another is going back, withdrawing. So Vivekananda therefore said, if I want to educate myself again today, he said, I am going to learn two techniques. One is to gain concentration. Another is to withdraw and remain calm, quiet and silent. These are the two dimensions. Then I can go into any field, I will marvel. This essentially is yoga. So you may use asanas, you may use pranayam, you may use meditation, you may use different techniques, kriyas, mudras, mandhas, several other things. But what we have to do? Mastery over the mind. That we should be able to increase our power of concentration. More brilliant, sharper, quicker, beautier. At the same time, we should be able to withdraw, remain calm, quiet, silent. For any length of time that you want. I have a half an hour, I just want to be quiet, silent, deeply relaxed. We should be able to do that. But unfortunately, our education system has not taught us today. Education system has only taught us how to become faster, quicker, more brilliant, more sharp, intelligent, concentration, increase, increase, increase. Therefore, we have increased our power of concentration, increased our focusing power, increased our speed of thinking, increased our memorizing power, all that we have increased, we have grown gigantic. But we have not harnessed that power to calm down. Therefore, as modern human beings today, we have to learn the second dimension. No? So it doesn't mean, mean what time or what age we start. No? Better late than never. No? We can all start doing that. It is the simplest thing. To calm down the mind, silence the mind. Then we have the mastery. Because of that big imbalance, it percolates down into the physical frame and causes autonomic imbalance, endocrine imbalance, causing all the problems in the body. So, by gaining the mastery, you will be able to reverse these diseases. And that's what we have been doing extensively over the last 30 years. You know, lakhs of people have got the benefit of that. And we treat that with a total approach, what we call the integrate approach of yoga therapy that we are doing. You know. So, at the Vignanamaya Kosha level, or at the intellectual level, we bring about notional corrections. And that set of notional corrections we bring about will work wonders. What do I mean by notional correction? Invariably, most of the asthmatics feel that I have got this asthma because Bangalore has become terrible, too much of pollution, there is parthenium weed, because of that I get this problem. Then we ask them, okay my dear, how many people suffer in Bangalore because of asthma? 4%. 
What happened to all 96 percent? They also have the same pollution, they also have the same parthenary. Why they don't get? Modern medical world has shown that there is an internal defect in the respiratory system. Non specific bronchial hyperreactivity. Or more specifically, the overtone of the parasympathetic nervous system. Hypersensitive parasympathetic nervous system. Therefore, a little dust will come, and then immediately there is going to be constriction of the bronchus. Therefore, what is the problem? Problem is not outside. Problem outside can only trigger you. But if you have a strong system inside, nothing is going to happen. Therefore, what is needed is a correction inside. The hypersensitivity has to be reduced. Parasympathetic system has to be cooled down. And we have to bring an autonomic balance. Instead of going and removing all things outside, do that. No harm. But that is not going to solve the problem. This is what I call as notional correction. So we have to bring that notional corrections if you want a total solution to the problem. And that is what the Gnana Yoga provides. Gnana Yoga also provides the basis for ethics and morality. Why this bioethics? Why this ethics committee? And the principles of ethics, how we can overcome that? That is what the Gnana Yoga provides. Ultimately, we should all have a very, very happy life, contented life, life with a lot of happiness, health, harmony and peace and love. Can we have that? That is through Karma Yoga. Karma Yoga enunciates the principles and methods to do that. And the essence of that is to maintain equanimity. Karma Yoga tells that Samatvam Yoga Vichyate. Yoga is to maintain that equanimity. And that's what we today know as the maturity. Every mature executive, a top professional of the highest achievement, very balanced. He you know, doesn't get upset for trivial things. You know. And the test comes only when we face the most demanding situation. Can you maintain that equipoise? Can you maintain that equanimity? Can you maintain that stability, that balance, that harmony, equipoise? That is the essence of Karma Yoga that we are going to do. Therefore, yoga is a very special skill in action. Action in relaxation. Working with a duty sense, with all the sensitivities that we have. Moving towards selfless action, unattached action, and with no anxiety towards results. These are the dimensions we can bring wonders to our life, to make our life extremely useful. And that is the technique that we talk about in Karma Yoga. Yoga ha karmasu kaushalam. Yoga is dexterity, the skill in action, not mere efficiency. So, the dimension of yoga, therefore, you know, is working at all levels, four main streams of yoga. And thereby we elevate ourselves from our lowest animal level to the highest level of total perfection. And applications to the health is one part of yoga. We can call it as the integrative approach of yoga therapy that we do. With that, I have given a brief outline of introduction to yoga and the streams of yoga. Thank you very much. And then, any questions you may have, we will spend a few minutes. How bioethics is related to the framework of yoga. yoga? If the relationship is made a little more explicit, mm. that will be helpful. Sure. Thank you. See, normally, in bioethics, we emphasize the ethical dimension in doing our research, particularly. And what is the necessity for this ethics? Though we know the common sense thing that, yes, we should be all be ethical and moral and others. But in the society at large, generally, we all know what is good. We all know what are moral and ethical character. But we don't do that. You know? Because we are pulled by the lower emotional surges or slavery. This is often called as Duryodhana Vitinas. Duryodhana character in Mahabharata says that I know what is right, I don't do right things. I know what is wrong, I am drawn to do wrong things. Janami dharmam nachame pravruttihi. Janami adharmam nachame nivruttihi. He said, you know. You know, smoking is bad. But when I see some friends going there, I start going, smoking. So not that we don't know ethics and morality and what we have to do in research. 
the ethical committees and then we prescribe ethics and laws, everything. But how to follow these things meticulously with highest integrity? That needs an inner growth. That needs a steadfastness. When there is a conflict, one side there is the pull of the money, on the other side honesty, integrity. Which do you choose? Money is very attractive and it could be lax. I remember one of our friends, you know, great executive engineer, and he had called for the tenders, 2,500 crores, big project. They had five tenders that have come, day after tomorrow they had to open up the tenders. Then one of the contractors comes, meets him in the home and says, Sir, please pass mine, here is the money, 10 lakhs. Is that what are you talking? Get lost. Then the second day, another person, the third person, fourth person, everybody offering more and more. The fifth person who came, he was offering him something like 45 lakhs. And he told me, even when I earn and save the fullest, he was getting about 10,000 rupees at that time. The whole life, if I do, I will not get this amount of money. Look at the attraction. So what made me to go to the path of ethics and integrity is my yoga, he said. Yoga gave me that internal strength. And I called all the people after opening the tenders, selecting that person, I know how much you have offered me. I am going to have a strict vigilance on you. When you offer the money, then there is going to be reduction in the efficiency, reduction in the work quality. I will never allow that. No? Be careful. Again, if you do anywhere, anything like this, I will throw you out. How can you get this internal strength? For that you have to gain mastery over the mind. Therefore, that's how our Nandiniji, these people have proposed the yoga dimension to be brought into the light. And yoga on one front is understanding and another thing is practice. For that practice of Gnana Yoga, practice of Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Gnana Yoga, all these things are available. And that's why she also proposed that this should be, practice also should be compulsory. But people opine that, okay, let's have voluntary. No problem. Fine. Let people come voluntarily. And then there is going to be greater motivation when they come voluntarily. And you will really enjoy the yoga practice session. And you get wonderful inner harmonization and balance that takes place. And this I consider is the basic you know, connection between the ethics, bioethics particularly, and the yoga dimension. <coughs> thank you for a very good question. Uh, okay. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, thank you very much for an interesting presentation. Thank you. Uh, I, I wanted to find out from you. Uh, mm. Yesterday we sort of learned that uh, many disciplines can be uh, divided into two. One which is uh, based on, uh, on faith, uh, belief, and what and the other one which is based on uh, knowledge. Mm. Uh, where would you classify yoga? Is it faith-based or is it based on uh, knowledge? I call it as a science. The belief may be an initial stage to start off. But as you start learning and you start getting the knowledge, the faith becomes the real inner Conviction. So yoga is all science. What we have been presenting, Gnana Yoga, Raj Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, is basically on the science. For example, if a scientist wants to go, he must have an open mind. He should not be just blocked by his faiths. Oh, I like this, therefore it's right. I don't like this, therefore it is wrong. Somebody says, there is God here. No, 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 I don't believe in God. You know? How do you know that there is God? Yes, question how there is God and then what is God. But don't say that I don't believe in God. If you say don't believe in God, then you are not a scientist. Similarly, if you say that I totally believe in God, then also you are not a scientist. So only when you do the experimentation to see whether God exists or not exists, then you become a scientist. And yoga talks about this science. No blind faith. You can come with a faith, you may not come out with a faith, but you explore. It is the science of exploration, I call. 
and I'm going to describe what the Gnana Yoga, you'll see those dimensions, how people explore an absolute science going there. So yoga can be tested with the tool of scientific research. That's what we have been doing. Some of the things we don't know today, but we have to do the research to examine whether it's right or not. Some may be wrong, some may be right. This is the attitude, this is the vision with which you go. Thank you. Nice question. Yes. Sir, you said that uh, yoga talks of attaining holistic health and also concentration of mind. Mm. Would you say that all the health problems are related to mind and the related stress? Particularly the modern ailments like asthma, diabetes, hypertension, heart problem, epilepsy, migraine, irritable bowel syndrome, including even cancer. Many of these things are all mind related. What we call as a adhija vyadhi. Vyadhi originated with the mind. Also there is anadhija vyadhi. That means that which is not originated from the mind. For example, you are going and you have a big accident. There is a surgery which causes you problem. Breaking up bones could be a problem. Somebody comes and hits you, could be a problem. This are we call as, we classify this anadhija vyadhi. Even there, there is a role of yoga. But predominantly for the modern things, we have application of yoga more predominantly useful. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yoga has meditation in it as a component. Right, sure. When we meditate, if mm. we meditate in the right direction, it's mm. okay, we become good human beings. Right. But there are people who can meditate on the criminal side right. and become a criminal. Now, Correct. how do we tackle this? So, we have the freedom. We have the freedom either to become good or bad. You can use all these tools and things to see that we strengthen our lower instincts. Therefore, you become a rakshasa. That means a terrorist you can become. Even a terrorist can use yoga for increasing your willpower and then focusing and all that. Therefore, there is the dimension of Gnana Yoga, the dimension of total understanding. And when you use that understanding, you start growing in the right direction. But the choice is ours. Uh, because we are putting this in the frame of ethics. Right. So I just Correct. wanted to know how good it will be sure. when we start yeah. doing it. Okay, thank you. Sir, mm -hmm. so th there may be some other methods of relaxing our body like walking, jogging. And yeah. So, is there any relationship or any difference between these? Physical exercises Emotional and exercise. the asanas practices have quite a difference. In physical exercise, you essentially do it as a workout. You spend a lot of energy and is used for the workouts to reduce your weight and so on. Whereas asanas are meant to give you deep relaxation to the body. It conserves the energy and therefore it reduces the stresses and brings an unbalance in the endocrine and the autonomic nervous system. So these are the dimensions which yoga provides us. And you can add on exercises for workout, then add on this dimension of stress relief component of the yoga to make it more holistic. Similar things in other dimensions also. Karachi and uh, Jidoka, they are working with the mind. If you want to do anything with karet, you have to work with the mind. Is it part of yoga action? Another one is what is that? Tai Chi. Jo Jidoka and karate. Karate. Yeah. Karate. It's part yeah. of the mind. Right, right. You just have to be working with your mind if you mm. wanted to do this. Correct. Is it part of the mm. yoga? Yeah. Karate is a technique of self-defense using the power of the mind for self-defense essentially. This is how it was developed. You know? And therefore it has the component of yoga of using the mind to strengthen yourself. Otherwise with that willpower you just cut. If they say brick can be cut. The mind is brought there. You know? And therefore it is the dimension of yoga included. But as she was asking, supposing you start using this karate to cut others, beat others, exploit others, terrorize others, we don't call it as yoga. We call it as a terrorist act. But these things can be used for good or bad. It is left to us. For example, we have nuclear power. We can use to have the atomic explosion and finish Hiroshima. But we can use it for nuclear power to bring all the controlled energy. The choice is ours. Beautiful question. Sir. Yeah. Uh, yoga is said to be a, a compilation of yama, niyama, asana, pranayama, pratyahara and 
dharana dhyana samadhi dhyana dharana samadhi mm. in this uh, when we come to pratyahara and uh, mm. some uh, dharana, dharana and last samadhi how relevant do you find this in your experience mm. in this context like mm. uh, in the current world mm. they are very very useful we are going to take up that when we deal with raja yoga and the first five limbs are meant essentially to gain control over the mind indirectly yama niyama asana pranayama pratyahara work through different dimensions whereas dharana dhyana samadhi is to work directly with the mind without using other things the goal is same the goal is to gain control and mastery over the mind no uh, my question was that uh, mm. sir the last three Mm. that's dharana dharana dhyana samadhi, samadhi. Mm. Uh, how relevant is it now like uh, is there anyone who has who is uh, practicing it now or uh, oh thousands millions are practicing meditation Thank 1970 you, 172 or marshi marshi yogi is brought then we have vipassana meditation we have got so many types of meditation our friend in delhi you no know, he compiled 108 different types of meditation techniques today almost <coughs> in vogue people practice it in a very big way meditation probably is probably is more than asanas nowadays asanas have become little more popular otherwise people have been doing meditation more but many people say yoga and meditation that's a wrong thing meditation is part of the yoga dimension of course uh, dhyana and other things can be practiced but the food what we get now uh, does it help the last part uh, last three Yeah, yama and Nema are essentially the ethical and moral foundations. No? And that forms the basis for yoga. Without the Yama and Nema dimension, ethics and moral foundation thing, if you go, then there is a possibility that you may get deteriorated. Therefore, it is prescribed by Patanjali as Yama and Nema is the basis. In all yogas, this has been prescribed. But later on, dimension is to understand that and how to make it a conviction within you and to maintain that. and therefore it becomes more relevant as i said pranayama also is very powerful very useful for this but what particular yoga you use depends on you you have the choice one person can do only meditation he may not practice pranayama or pratyahara and he will use that for the good purpose so we say that uh, when we pray with belief only then we are, we get our answers to our prayers mm. so um, uh, is it like that with yoga also that is if we do it with belief only then we are do we expect to get results like Not like if we go for a physical exercise we mm. know if we go for jogging mm. regularly we'll uh, yeah. be in fit condition exactly or whatever like so yeah. is it for yoga is it more of psychological no, no. or uh, or 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 like you, you may said have belief there are people it's a science of exploration Yeah, people who have come to us with absolute disbelief you know recently we had one of the person who was a big high diabetic and also hypertension he told our dr nagratna i don't believe in this yoga it's all hoax then why did you come sir because my doctor endocrinologist he has told that you go you know he was such a lebai diabetic and he got wonderful result thank you sir thank you sir we'll, we'll thank you very much you.